to the true God. Amen. They will accept. Amen. Amen. Church, as long as you don't pressure them into living right. Somebody say amen. Don't tell me how to preach. Don't tell me what to say. Don't tell me how to live. Don't tell me where I can go and what I can't go. Let me live my own life. I want you to know that there's a scripture in the Bible that says if we see trouble coming and we do not warn you, your blood will be Amen. The church is mocked and made fun of. Uh, and it's regarded as just some old building. Uh, or just a bunch of old folks that are stuck in their ways. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, amen. Uh, we're stuck in our ways. You know. Uh, amen. We don't. Amen. Uh, want to be. We don't want to move up. And we don't want. Uh, amen. To live in the modern day. We're still living. Uh, in the old way. Uh, but I want you to know. Uh, that there's an old path. Amen. Yeah. That needs to be cleaned out. Yeah. And the needs need to be
want you to know that there's coming a day, uh, amen, that God's going to laugh. Uh, that's what the Word said. Uh, the Word said He would call uh, and you would not answer. Uh, he said He would beg and you would not come. Uh, he said that there'll come a day uh, that you'll call upon me. Uh, Back to 
this is that easy preaching. But Noah was a man of God, and God loved Noah, and Noah loved God. They had a relationship with each other. Amen. It wasn't a surprise when Noah began to talk to God, and then God talked back. They had a relationship. You see, some of us surprise God when we talk to him, because he ain't heard from us in so long. But when you have a relationship with God, you'll talk to him. When you love God, you'll talk to him. When you just flirt with him, you'll talk to him every once in a while. But God's not looking for a date. He's looking for a time. He's looking for somebody. He's looking for somebody. He can call his own. Noah was a preacher. You listen to me. You look up here and listen to me. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Amen. And he preached. And God told Noah, said, Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth. But I want you to build a boat or an ark. Amen. Same thing. I want you to build an ark. And I'll give, I'll give you the measurements. And I'll give you the size. And I want you all to know Noah didn't have the tools that we got now. Some of you carpenters in here got every tool that you can think of. Noah didn't have them tools. But he had the blueprints from heaven to earth. He know exactly how high to make it. He know exactly how wide to make it. He know the picture would be in her. And he know the picture would have. You know what's wrong with the church? The picture know he's out. But they ain't picture what's for me. Yeah. <laughs> 
And the Bible says that the Lord shut up the door. Yeah. I want to preach right here. I want you to know tonight you don't have any change you want. You can't get saved when you want to. You got to get saved oh, oh. the door. laid out of church and then when he got married he got back in church he said that was my whole plan I want you to know he just as lost as his handkerchief is Come on. Come on. this handkerchief might be more saved than he is I want you to know you don't pick and choose Come on. when you serve God Amen. Uh, I got Amen. one better for you the Bible says that you are partakers of the heavenly gift oh Lord Come on, brother. me Jesus if you're partakers of the heavenly gift and you fall away to renew yourself again, it's almost impossible. What is that heavenly gift? It's the revelation of who Jesus is. I've seen folks fall out that were in the name and they still can't get back. Why? Because only the door of opportunity here tonight. And if you don't embrace it, Noah got on the boat, the Lord shut the door. Come on. Uh, well, there's a door that the Gentiles came through. Uh, uh, and the Bible says that when the time of the Gentiles uh, is fulfilled, uh, boom, the door's going to shut. Uh, uh, God's got a Gentile bride. Uh, he's got a Gentile bride. Uh, but if that with his blood and with his name. I want you to know tonight you don't have every opportunity they are to give your life to God. You must come. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open up, I'll come into him. Let him come into me. And I will sup with him and him with me. You better come while he's not laughing. Because when God laughs, it's not funny. Yeah. 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 You look here. Now I don't know about it. I don't know about it. I'm going to preach it. You look here. Can you imagine? Let's look on the other side of things. Let's don't look in the yard. Let's look on the outside of the yard. Let's look on the outside of it. The Bible said that the fountains of the deep opened up. The springs opened up. And the water tub. You know water is a force that you can't contain. You can put a fire out, but you can't stop the water. When it comes, it's unstoppable. Hey man, it'll destroy homes and it'll destroy lives. It'll overthrow the world. Hey man, in the 1972, when that Buffalo Creek flood, when that damn boat was ahead of that creek, I want you to know there was people running all over the mountainside, grabbing their children, putting them up trees, and everything. And there was nothing that anybody could do.
Virgin stands for purity. They were pure, but they didn't have no oil in them. We got a lot of church folks like it. Uh, they look good. Right? They sound good. Come on. But what do they possess on the inside? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. Don't you know it's, 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 it's possible to be lost with God and still stay in the church? Come on. Come on. Uh, don't you know it's, it's possible that you can backslide on God and still stay in the church? Uh, go through churchly ways and do the churchly thing and stand and say amen and kneel and pray and bow and do all these things and still uh, your heart not be right with God. Uh, wouldn't it be awful for you uh, to go through all the process uh, and all the works of being a Christian uh, and stand before God uh, and Him look at you uh, and tell you you're lost. Uh, depart from me. Oh, preacher, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me take you to the book. Uh, he said there'd be many stand before Him uh, in the last day. Uh, and they would say, Heaven, I cast it out devils in your name. We ain't talking about a Trinity church. We're talking about an apostolic church. Heaven, I cast it out devils in your name. Heaven, I do this in your name. Didn't I put the guitar in your name? Didn't I preach in your name? Didn't I baptize in your name? But he's going to say, Depart from me.
supposed to love them. Absolutely. Never said I didn't love them. Come on. But I hate their way. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Let's all stand. I'm done. Somebody might want to pray with that. I don't know. God laughs. It's not funny, man. That's right. I hate to know that I, that, that, that I'm lost. I hate to know that I stay before God and be lost. Oh, God. I used to have dreams when I was a little boy. <laughs> I go to church, you know. They they used to preach hell back then. They didn't care if they wasn't no sin in the church. Right. They preached hell in the church. Huh? They preach hell. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Larry. They preach hell so hot that you couldn't hardly sit still. I'm telling you, I know what I'm I'm telling you, I've heard them preach hell so hot I can smell smoke. I've heard it preach so hot that I could smell the embers burning. Can you imagine the smell that I come up out of that pit? Can you imagine? Amen. When they open that pit up and in the distance you hear that rich man holler. Give me one drop of water. Give me one drop of water. What is one drop of water compared to an eternity in hell tonight, my friend? Go home at night and I'd lay on the bed and I'd think about what the preacher preached. And I'd be too scared to close my eyes. I'd be too scared to close my eyes. Just a little old pup. Not big as nothing. Afraid of fear. Afraid that I'd die and be lost without God. You know, I may never, never, ever be a rich man. I know I won't. I got too much family to be rich. I may never be a rich man. I may never have a new home, but you know what? None of them things matter to me. What matters to me, Brother Dewey, is that my name's written in that book. It don't matter what you say about me. It don't matter what you say about me or what you say about me. If my name is in that book. Uh, you know, if I go to get a motel and I call ahead and get reservations, uh, and I call and I get them reservations, and I go down there, and that woman at the desk says, I ain't got no room for you. Uh, and I say, well, look, look, look my name up. Uh, see if Robert Hawkins ain't in there. Uh, and she goes down that list and she said, well, here's a room, 202, and your name's down for it. I guess you do have a room. Uh, you see, it don't matter what she says. Uh, what matters is it's my name uh, written in that book. Oh, oh, Jesus told his disciples that don't rejoice. Don't know the devils are subject to you, but rejoice. But your name oh, is written in the land of yeah. God. Are you here tonight, lost without God? Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you here, cold on God? Thank you, Are you here tonight, and you don't know whether you're right or not? It's been times in my life, my own life, I didn't know whether I was right or not. It's been times in my, I thought about my church going life. But I, I didn't know whether I was right or not. There's been times that I go through all the motions, but in my heart there wasn't nothing there. Were you there tonight? Were you just going through all the motions and just coming to church because you got a girlfriend or you got a boyfriend or your wife won't shut up? Or your husband won't quit. Or maybe it's the guy you work with that won't stop. Let me tell you what they're doing. They're warning you. They're warning you. And if you close your eyes tonight and you die, it ain't going to make one difference what we say on the top of you when you lay up here. Larry can preach the greatest sermon ever was. And you can have the most beautiful array of flowers. And people could cry over you. I've seen them cry until their tears would run the makeup off of the people's face laying in the coffin. 
and they'd be just as lost. I'm telling you, I've stood over top of them, Larry, and looked in their face and know where they was. Don't you judge them, preacher. As a tree falls, so shall it be. You ain't going to get saved from here to there. You're going to get saved here so you can go to there. When I sit and look at them in the face and know, you can see anguish. You can see fear. You can see torment in their face. And their mothers and their fathers would lay over top of them and cry and howl and weep and moan and groan. Their children would stand there and beg for mommy or daddy to get up. It's too late. He's preaching a young girl's funeral here a while back. Mommy said, I want you to preach hell. So I want you to preach hell as hard as you can. Brother Larry, that's, that's a funny feeling. And you're sitting there and you know you, you should be comforting people. And you're preaching on hell and torment. The Holy Ghost come on me and I preached hell. And there was a woman sitting in the, in, the, in the seats of the funeral home, right on the front seat. Brother Larry, her head rolled back. Her head went, I mean, it's unbelievable. I can't explain to you. Her head looked like it detached from her shoulders and rolled down her back. And she screamed. She screamed in torment. I hate this preacher. Tell you, church, he's coming. He's coming back, and if you're lost without God, you're in trouble. Amen. You're in trouble if you're lost without God. Amen. Why don't you come tonight? I guess this is all right. Why don't you come tonight? Won't you come 